this is uh, Navajo Loop Trail, uh, standing from above the uh, canyon rim and looking down into this this canyon. Now it's fun to uh, visit these parks and look down off of the cliffs into the uh, valleys, but it's even more exciting to get down inside of the canyon and where the glow is just bouncing around, setting up your easel right down there and doing some painting on the spot, which I have done here. But oh, what a great experience it is to be out in the national parks, to walk and inside of the canyons and down the river, like walking down the Virgin River in autumn in Zion National Park. I can't think of anything more beautiful. And so we want to enjoy that, but we want to have the equipment with us that we can actually experience it with all of our senses, which is what happens when you paint on location, on the trail somewhere, you're not just using your eyes, but you're using all of your senses so that you can remember that experience uh, greater than you possibly could if you just walked through it and maybe shot a snapshot or two and then went back home again. When you sit down and draw in these canyons, it is an amazing experience. And that's why I enjoy it so much and I recommend it to you too. But in my studio, uh, Everything is kind of all right in front of me and, and I'm able to get to it. Now when I'm out on the trail, I use a whole different setup. Uh, this is what I carry when I'm, when I'm out painting anywhere. This little bag has been with me all over the world for the last 20 years. But I've got everything in here that I need uh, to work with on the trail. I've got a sketchbook which I keep extensive sketches and I'll show you more of those in a minute. I've got paper to paint on already mounted in here. I've got uh, of course my water which is uh, really critical for watercolor painters and it's also critical to keep you alive on the trail. I've got my pencils over here. I've got brushes. I've got just about everything I need. Now on the trail I don't take these Allagion palettes with me usually uh, I'll use a small kit. This is a Winsor Newton kit here. It's a, it's, it's a pocket size and, and uh, I've got it outfitted with a good Winsor Newton paints, pan paints. And I can just open this up on the trail. I've got a couple of, of nice uh, palette areas here to mix the paint in and that makes it very, very uh, useful to us. And then I'll take along just a couple of my regular brushes or I have a a uh, little brush inside of here that um, that is expandable and so I've really got everything that I need right with me at all times either to sketch or to paint or to do whatever I want to when I'm out on the trail and that's the setup that I usually use uh, when I'm outdoors. Now I have a camper that it's fixed up so that it can carry all of my equipment and when I want to have a little nicer setup when I'm painting plain air in Zion or the national parks around here. Sometimes I'll just take my camper uh, if I need a nap or if I need some water or I need something else it's all right there with me so it's a little bit different when I'm close to home. But when I'm out on the trail or, or working on in some of these canyons that are around us I need to be a little more portable and that's why I use that little bag and that little kit. And one of the things I use when I'm out uh, in, on the trail in the national parks is I carry with me some small sketchbooks that are hardbound and that enable me to keep my drawings and my notes all in one place. Um, these are some notes from a recent uh, hike and trip up through the Grand Staircase National Monument. And uh, I was fortunate to be with a couple of great geologists and uh, they helped me with some of the uh, the more technical aspects of how these cliffs were formed and of course I'm busily sketching at the same time and, and writing some notes. Uh, here's a sketch I did uh, in preparation for this painting right here. This is uh, what they call Thor's hammer and you can see there's Thor's hammer and here's this pinnacle back here that we see right behind the little indication of the cliffs. Again, this is just a study to help me as I get back to the studio to do more of a finished piece like this one is and this little sketch really gives me some help in doing that when I get back plus when you're on location and you sketch boy do you remember it you remember everything 
And that's what I like about being on location and painting while we're outside or even sketching. It's just the same. And you record that image not just with your mind or your eyes, but with all of your senses. You remember when you look at this sketch how the air felt and what the sandstone felt like and what the weather was like and the people that came up and talked to you while you're sketching and painting, which they always do because they love to see art in the making. Now I'm talking about uh, working out on the trail. Here's a couple of uh, small studies that I did when I was uh, out on location. When you're out there, you're not going to be painting this big usually because you're not going to be hauling around that size of a, of a, uh, a board and, and watercolor paper. It's not very practical. So I'll work about this size or maybe just a little bit, bit larger. Now let me see if I can uh, zero in on this and show you just a little bit uh, more of what this painting looks like. Okay. And here then is another little painting. That, um, that I did on the trail as a study for this painting right here. And um, a very, very quick and uh, just kind of a, to give me an indication of what's there. And I can do these very rapidly on the trail. It's a good experience uh, to do that. And then when you get back to the studio, you can use uh, your reference material and your sketches from your sketchbook and all of these things um, and, and come up with a painting that might be just a little more finished uh, as this one is right here. Well now I'd like to just show you uh, how this finished painting that I have here actually got started. This is uh, what I used when I came back to my studio from that. Uh, I always come up with a little value study and I have the reference photos nearby that I'm going to use if I, if I need them. But once I come up with a value study, that helps me uh, to decide on which direction I'm going to go. To establish a nice composition, a value plan uh, of lights to darks. And, and very rough and very small. That's why we call them thumbnail sketches, because they're little. Uh, always smaller than 3 by 5 And that's so you don't get trapped by the details, but you just stay... Uh, right at your task, which is to organize the values into a, a suitable and an enjoyable composition. So that's what this value study is for. And I'll always keep this nearby when we paint, but let me just show a little bit closer. Can you see how uh, we're not really trying to copy the photograph as much as we are trying to reduce the elements in there into something that will work in our finished painting which is here. Now we can use uh, the photographs for reference on various things uh, and that helps us uh, back in the studio in terms of sometimes structure and if, we, if we're doing an actual place that needs to look like what it looks like then we need to get everything in its proper arrangement but we still have a lot of artistic license there. Uh, from the photograph, not much coming on in the foreground. The shadows aren't quite as strong as we want. I like the way the background is pushed back and uh, not with too much going on back there. We, we sense that it's there. So in my composition, I decided to uh, create a situation where I'd have some things in the foreground. For instance, a, uh, a bush up here on the edge of the cliff with strong darks coming down. That helps to lead us down into this area, and we have this kind of a circular feeling as it comes down. We follow Thor's hammer up into this area where all the light is. Our eyes are always drawn to the lightest light uh, against the darkest darks in a painting. So that's what I'm trying to accomplish here. And I decide that in my thumbnail value study before I begin. So there's an example of the approach that I would take on a painting like this. And I will set this nearby, uh, you know, sometimes right on it, but maybe off to the side somewhere as I paint so that I can reference that. And then I try to create a composition that really works and a painting that really sings. And I hope this is one of those that does that and has that sparkle that I like.